Namaste. Namaste. I'm Laura Lynn and welcome. Well, week nine, now we're getting into linking our poses, the individual poses that we've been working on and dialing in our alignment and learning where we are in space with our bodies and where we are in space with our minds and hearts too, right? Uh, uh, now, we're, now we're going to take those poses and we're going to start to flow them together. That's what vinyasa is. Vinyasa is linked flowing poses, linking it with your breath. There's a special breath that we use when we're doing our flow. We're using our, uh, our, our breath to move through our practice and it's called Ujjayi Pranayama. That translates as victorious breath, victorious energy. We call it this because it's a uh, tightening of the glottis, which is like right here at your throat, just a little tightening right there, like you're gonna whisper. The breath moves in and out through the nostrils the entire time. And when we constrict our throat in this fashion, it controls, it directs the breath. That siphons it in and out through the throat, keeps us more aware of our breath, and also energizes it. Victorious breath, powerful breath. The other tools that we use in our vinyasa practice are uh, our bandhas, our energy locks. And we have three. One here at our throat called Jalandhara Bandha by just dropping our chin to our chest, lowering our chin to our chest, raising our chest to our chin. We kind of seal off the throat a little bit more, firms up that throat and directs the energy more effectively. Our second energy lock right here at our belly, Uriana Bandha, affected by drawing the navel in and lifting it up, flying upward lock. The last bandha we have is mula bandha. Mula means root. So you can imagine it's right at the base of your torso. And you do that by finding a lift at your pelvic floor. So working with our bandhas and our ojai breath today, we're going to start to link our poses together. It's fun. It's flowing. It's graceful. It's challenging. So remember the other tool that you have for your practice, which is child's pose, Adho Mukha Virasana, downward facing hero's pose, the rest pose. I'll introduce it, uh, reintroduce it to you today at the beginning of this practice so you have it fresh in your mind. But at any time through this practice, you need to take a break. And, and that's a strong possibility, all right? Take a break, come down to child's pose. Let yourself breathe. Reconnect with your breath, find your body, find your bandhas again, and then return back into the flow. That's being intelligent. Staying in your flow when you're feeling anxious or nervous or shaky is not intelligent. It's also not yoga anymore. It's like some sort of <laughs> weird, torturous calisthenics, you know? Uh, and, and we want to remember that our yoga means union to bring together our body, our mind, and our individual spirit. Ultimate goal, to link our individual spirit with the divine spirit. That's the ultimate end goal of yoga. Samadhi, utter bliss, supreme consciousness, unity. Every time we get on our mat, we take a few steps along that path. We get a little bit closer. So celebrating that and this opportunity here, catch hold of your knees, lift your sternum chest. Now your right chin should be in first, your left to the outside, and be sitting on a blanket or a little bit of hip support so that your knees are lower than the top of your pelvic rib. And then turn the eyes of the elbows up, lift the chest, bring your lower shoulder blades together, let the tops of the shoulders release down away from the ears and the upper back shoulder blades to broaden. Now palms together, take the thumbs to the sternum chest, take a deep breath in 
and close your eyes. Exhale. Just take a moment here to notice how your body feels and where you're at in space. Take a deep breath down into your belly. Let it climb up into the rib cage. Up into the collarbones, up into the throat. The exhale just reverses that by emptying from the top of the lungs to the base, down the rib cage, and back to the belly. A few more breaths just like this. The hinge of your jaw is soft, your lips are soft and just barely touching. Little muscles around your eyes are relaxed and broad. Now together, three ohms. Ohm is the sound of the universe, the sound of the divine a tool for meditation and healing that you have within you. But if the sound of Om does not please you, you can say Amen, or you can say any sound that is pleasing, pleasing and soothing to you. Exhale to begin your first Om. We'll do three all together. Inhale your breath. Om. you surrender the intelligence of your head to the intelligence of your heart. And we take a moment to honor those who've gone before us on this path. Sage Patanjali wrote the Yoga Sutras, Sri Bikas Iyengar, and all our Gurus. We bow to our greatest teacher, always remembering the truth and the perfection and the divinity that resides within. And then exhale and float the backs of your hands down to your thighs. Inhale and bring your chin up to center with your eyes still closed. Exhale and open your eyes. Good work. Reach your arms forwards and up. Let's warm up our shoulders. Inhale and up. Now turn your palms to face away. Exhale and reach those arms wide as they float down. Loop the shoulder blades together. Bring your fingertips to the blanket or the mat behind you. Just lift your hips a little bit and gaze up. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. Bring the hips back down. So you're working on linking your breath with your movement. Inhale, arms forwards and up. Turn the palms to face away. Exhale the arms wide back down behind you. Loop the shoulder blades. Be up on your fingertips. Inhale, lift the hips. Gaze up. Exhale back down. Now one more time. Engage those lower bandhas and use your ujjayi breath. Inhale, throw constriction arms forwards and up. Exhale, throw constriction. Arms out and down, fingertips behind you. Inhale, lift the hips, even just an inch. Gaze up, exhale, hips back down. Good. You're gonna switch the cross of your legs, moving through straight legs. Reach the legs forward, give the toes a little wiggle. And then bring your left shin in and take your right to the outside. Reach your left arm up to the ceiling, right hand to the mat next to you, breathe in. Bend your right elbow, exhale over to the right and breathe out. Inhale, rise up, left hand to floor, right arm up to the ceiling. Exhale over to the left, 
Again, slow it up as you inhale. Down as you exhale. Again, up as you inhale. Use your bandhas. Use your ujjayi breath, that little whispering sound in the back of your throat. Rise up and move right into a twist. Bring your left hand be, uh, to the outside of your right thigh and right hand behind you. Take a deep breath in here as you lift the chest and press down with the thighs. And exhale, sweep yourself all the way around. Your breath is the music in your practice. Breathe in as you lengthen the spine, press down with your thighs. Exhale and twist. Again, inhale, flow it around. Exhale and twist. Inhale, flow it around. Exhale and twist. Inhale and come back to center. Take your hands to your knees. Exhale, round the spine. Just rock yourself back on your hips. Let the shoulder blades move away from the spine. Inhale, come forwards and up with the sternum chest. Spread your collarbones, gaze up, stretch your eyes. Exhale and rock back. Are you feeling the rhythm? Using your breath to come forwards and up. Breathe it out as you rock back. Squeeze that breath out of the belly. Come to your neutral spine as you inhale. As you exhale, make your way onto your back. Uncross your legs. This might take a, more than just one exhale. Just keep breathing. Move your blanket out of the way. Holding on to the backs of your thighs, slowly lower yourself down. Now tuck the belly in towards the spine, lower down vertebrae by vertebrae. Once your head is on the mat, your entire spine is on the mat, reach your arms above your head, turn the palms to face the sky or the ceiling above you and straighten your legs. Press out through your heels, a nice stretch through the sides of your body, belly in and up, pelvic floor engaged, ujjayi breath flowing so sweetly. Full breath in right here. As you exhale, bend your right leg and catch on to the back of your right thigh. We're going to stay here for a few breaths. Start by squeezing the knee in towards your chest. So the knee and the foot and the hip are all in line with each other. Press out through your left thigh. Roll your outer shoulders down. Now take your knee a little bit over to the right and notice how that changes the stretch for you just a little bit. Keep pressing both shoulders down, both sides of your waist down. Keep your belly firm. Full breath in here, and then we're going to extend everything back down to the mat. Inhale. Exhale. And now inhale, and open it back up to the mat. Thumbs touch down, and then the palms face up. Exhale, left thigh in. Take the opposite interlace of your fingers. Roll the shoulders underneath you and start with the ankle, the knee, and the hip in line with each other. Squeezing the thigh in towards your belly. Now take the knee a little bit to the side and notice how that changes the stretch. It should feel good. If it doesn't feel good, adjust it until it does. Bring the knee back in. That's where you're at today. That's wonderful. Yoga doesn't mean you can stretch as far as you can. Yoga means union. Stay unified with your breath and with your spirit. Final breath in right here. Take a deep breath in. A full breath out. And then everything back to the mat. Reach it back to the mat as you breathe in. Thumbs touch down. Palms face up. 
Exhaling, right leg comes in. Give it a squeeze. Inhale, extend it back out. Notice you need to really engage those abdominals to control your limbs. Exhale, left leg in. Give it a squeeze in. Inhale, extend it back out. Exhale, right leg in. Just one more time each side. Inhale, reach it out. Exhale, left thigh in, last time right here. Inhale, and stretch it out. Exhale, bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor. Tuck your hips under you so that your sacrum is pressing down on the mat and your side waist, uh, which is right between your pelvic rim and your lower ribs. That area right there, just let it settle down into the mat. Now, tucking the tailbone under, finding a little scoop of the buttocks, you're going to press down into your feet and lift your hips by sending your knees forward. Don't turn your head. Inhale, lift your hips. That sacrum up, squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. Exhale and lower down. As you lower down, lower down vertebrae by vertebrae from top down to sacrum. Take a round of breath with your hips on the mat. That ujjayi inhale, that ujjayi exhale, and then roll it up again. Graceful and smooth. Tuck that tailbone under. Inhale and lift the spine. Now maybe the sternum bone comes a little closer to the chin. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Exhale, round as you come down. Just Feel each vertebrae setting down one by one. Take a round of breath right here. We'll do this one more time. On your inhale, reach those fingers away from you. Inhale, lift the hips. Lift each vertebrae, sacrum up nice and high. Squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. Keep your knees in line with your hips. Exhale and lower yourself down. Take a happy little round of breath right here. And then your next exhale draws both knees into your chest. Catch on to the backs of the thighs. Now we're going to rock and roll. This is playful. This is fun. We're going to rock and roll maybe four, five, six times. As you rock up and rock back, try to rock on one side of your spine up and then one side of the spine back. So you're not grinding your vertebrae into the mat. You're rather you're massaging your spinal muscles along either side of those actual vertebrae. After you've rocked five or six times, see if you can swing yourself up and all the way around to all fours tabletop pose. Give the legs a swing. And just rock side to side, up and back. And a nice massage on the back. It should feel good. And then all the way up, cross your ankles. Roll over your ankles and step yourself back to all fours, tabletop pose. Untuck your toes. Take a look at your hands and make sure the fingers are spread wide. And the palms are slightly turning out. So there's just a little bit of a rotation in those hands, which helps the eyes and the elbows come forward as well. Helps the upper arm bones sink well into the shoulder socket. Take a peek between your thighs and make sure that your feet are facing straight back and in our line with your knees. Your knees are in line with your hips. Now drawing the belly in. This belly never gets any closer to the mat than it is right now. Okay, don't let this navel sink. We don't want this to happen. We don't want to collapse in the lower back. So keeping the belly right where it's at, inhale and gaze up. Roll the shoulders away from the ears, press down into the mat. As you exhale, round your spine. Come back into your ujjayi breath, inhaling forwards and up without sinking those front ribs or that belly. Exhale and round. 
One more time, each direction, feeling the flow. Pushing down into the mat as you round to lift up through the sides of your spine even more. And then come to a neutral spine. Now, straighten your right leg, tuck the toes under, so your right leg is in uh, like a plank position. The toes are tucked under and the heel's pressing away. Lift the upper thigh and roll the inner thigh, the inseam of your uh, clothing, and roll that up towards the ceiling to keep the lower back stable, to keep proper alignment. Lift your shoulders away from your wrists and then lift your right foot up off of the mat. Keep the inner thigh rolling up, breathing here, and then reach your left arm out. Stretch these limbs away from each other, but keep the belly working in. Look down at the mat. Exhale back to the mat with all four limbs. Left side, straighten your left leg, tuck the toes under, roll the inseam up, and lift the top of the thigh a little bit higher. So this left leg is working quite strongly on your behalf. Now, when you find your balance here, lift your foot up off of the mat. You want that lower back to always stay level, stay with your ujjayi breath, reach your right arm out. Don't let the belly sink, firm the belly. Deep breath in, full breath out, stay with it, one more. And then exhale back to the mat. Walk your knees back just about two or three inches. Now take your knees nice and wide. Slide your big toes together. Let's find child's pose. Roll the hips back to the heels. Let the forehead rest on the mat or use your block underneath your forehead. And take a few deep breaths right here. Just remembering your resting position. The buttocks roll down towards the heels to broaden the lower back. Both shins are pressing down, as are the tops of all ten toes. Push away with your arms. A few more breaths. Move them into your side ribs. See if you can get some extension into your side ribs. Stay calm and peaceful. but firm at your core and that gentle tightness at your throat. Let's rise up, inhale and rise up. So this is the position that you bring yourself when you need to take a break. Walk your knees back in line, come back to tabletop position. Again, with those fingers spread wide, Reach your right leg back once more. Roll the inner thigh up. Draw the belly in. Lift your right leg up off of the mat. Lift your left arm up off of the mat. Imagine pr something's pressing on the inner edges of your leg and the inner edge of your hand. Resist that pressure. Keep everything working to midline. Stretch it out a little bit more. And see if you can find the... The place where the stretch meets, maybe it's right about at your lower ribs. So you stretch that left arm out and that right leg out. Where do you feel the stretch meeting? One more breath and then back to the mat. Stretching in this way is have a cross lateral stretch. It requires concentration and balance. Reach your left leg out, tuck the toes under, roll the inner thigh up. Lift the upper thigh, then lift the leg. Breathing here, reach the right arm out, balance and breathe. Again, there's like an imaginary pressure on the inner edge of the hand and the inner edge of the thigh. Push against that pressure. Draw the belly in, stretch and see if you can feel that space where the stretch meets, right about at the lower ribs on your back. One more breath. It's the center of gravity for you here. Exhale and bring the limbs back down to the mat. Gaze up, lift your chest, lift your chin. Exhale and round, tuck that tailbone under. And as you do this just a few more times with your own breath, at your own pace, see if you can feel that area where the stretch crosses over 
about lower ribs. We are working with that a little bit today. Now to your neutral spine, let's move on. Walk your knees back again about two or three inches. Nice long tabletop pose. Tuck your toes under and lifting your shoulders away from your wrists. So don't sink down into the shoulders. Don't sink down into the hands. Lift the shoulders away from the wrists. Roll the eyes of the elbows. Center the elbows forward. And then taking the pressure to the inner edges of your hands, lift your knees just an inch or two. Look down at the mat. Back of the neck is relaxed. Squeeze the lower shoulder blades together. Now, do you remember where that little crossed area of energy, where your energy met? Right there, about lower ribs, right about at your spine. Lift from there as you straighten your legs and press yourself back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Now, just bend your knees and move your body around in a pleasant way. Find a little bit of grace. This is a vinyasa practice. A little bit of a flow here. Shift your weight side to side. Roll your neck around. And then come to a still place on your mat. Two more breaths right here. Head is heavy. Face is relaxed. Lift your right leg. Inner inseam high. Exhale, draw the leg through to a high lunge. Plant your foot between your hands. Come up onto your fingertips. That back left leg now. It's doing that same thing it did a moment ago when you were in tabletop pose. You're lifting the upper thigh. You're rolling the inner thigh up. You're reaching through the heel. Reach your chest forward. Few breaths here. Firm your core. Take your hands to your hips and lift the torso. Balancing warrior one. The buttocks move down, the pubic bone lifts, the sternum bone lifts. Reach your arms straight forward like your wrists are bound together with a, with a strap. Keep them in line with each other as the arms lift above your head. Gaze up. Press out through your left leg. Keep rolling the inner thigh up. Exhaling now, hands back to the mat. Step back, Adho Mukha. Shanasana, downward facing dog. Flow back. Inhale, come forward onto your knees. Exhale, untuck your toes. Roll the hips back to the heels, knees in line with the hips. Look to the front of your mat. We're going to slide forward. And as you exhale, lower down. Let your forehead rest on the mat. Lift your right leg, reach the toes back, roll the inner thigh up, set the foot back down. Lift your left leg, roll the inner thigh up, reach back through the toes, set it back down. Tuck your buttocks towards your heels. You should feel your belly move away from the mat. Reach your arms down next to your sides. Inhale, lift your chest. Bring those lower shoulder blades together. Keep the upper shoulder blades broad, the belly firm. Exhale, bring your forehead back to the mat. Two more little pulses here. Inhale, pull back with the arms, palms face the hips, buttocks tucked towards the heels. Exhale, forehead back to the mat. Final time. Ujjayi inhale. Ujjayi exhale. Good work. Bend your elbows. Bring your hands next to your middle ribs. Squeeze your elbows in close to your sides. Press the tops of your shoulders away from your ears. Still digging in with the tops of your feet. Pull back with the heels. Keep the buttocks tipped. And now lift your chest again. Three little pulses here in cobra pose. A couple ribs lift. Exhale. Bring your forehead back to the mat. Inhale. Press down with your hands. Pull back with the hands. Exhale. Lengthen as you lower. One final time. Inhale. Lift the chest. Maybe another rib or two. And exhale. Forehead back to mat. Tuck your toes under. Come up to all fours. And then again, lift the knees. Straighten the legs and 
press back into your thighs. Take a few breaths here. It's going to reassess how things are going for you, how you're feeling, how your mind is, how your breath is. Settling into your practice now. Breathing deep. Deep and sweet. Inhale and lift your right leg. Exhale and bring it all the way through. Plant the foot between your hands. Come up on your fingertips. This time, you're going to step forward. Take a big step forward with that left leg and bow to the mat. Bow to your feet. Take a few breaths here. Filling the back with breath, letting the head relax. Lift your shoulders away from your ears. If you can't touch the mat with your hands, take your hands to the back of your shins. Now roll your hands, everyone around to the front of your shins, straighten your arms, reach your chest forward, gaze up past your eyebrows. Exhale, bow back down. Inhale, rise up. Lead with the crown of your head. And the arms open up nice and wide. Sweep them up. Turn your palms to face away. And exhale, swan dive back down to the mat. Lift those hamstrings, bow your head. Take your hands to your hips or your uh, shins, reach the chest forward. Exhale, come on to your fingertips and step back with your right foot. High lunge. Pressing out through your back right heel, roll the inner thigh up and then step back to downward facing dog. Pressing back into the thighs. Inhale and lift your left leg. Inner thigh high, heels pressing away, hips are level. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it on through, plant the foot between your hands. Come up onto your fingertips. Now feel that back right leg, yeah? Inner thighs rolling up, heels pressing away, and the upper thighs lifting. The whole pose comes from that back leg right there. Now take your hands to your hips and inhale. Rise up, lift your torso. Big power yoga vinyasa move right there. Reach your arms forward and inhale. Lift those arms, gaze up. Exhale, keep your lunge strong. Come as far forward as you can before bringing those fingertips back down. Then step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Still working with the bandhas, still working with that ujjayi breath. I know there's a lot going on. Do your best. Come forward onto your knees. Inhale. Exhale, untuck your toes. Round your spine and press the hips back to the heels. Look to the front of your mat. Whisper breath forward. Inhale. Exhale, lower down with control. Having your hands next to your middle ribs, squeeze the lower shoulder blades together, move the tops of the shoulders away from the ears, tuck your toes under. This is Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Buttocks tip towards the heels, power up those legs, inhale, lift your torso up off of the mat and gaze up. Roll the shoulders back, Lift the thighs a little bit higher, the upper thighs. You lift those thighs a little bit higher. You press out through the heels a little bit more. Now remember where that cross energy was, right about mid-back, just in the lower ribs. Pull up from that place to come back to downward facing dog. Breathe here. Full deep breath. Check in with your head and neck. And then step forward with your left foot. Come up onto your fingertips, press out through that right heel, look forward. Inhale and step forward with your right, bow. Catching on to the backs of your shins, if your hands don't reach the mat, take a few breaths here. Step 
Slide your hands around to the front of your shins. Everyone, lengthen your spine. Look forwards and up. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bow back down. Uttanasana. This time we're going to rise all the way up. Inhale, take the arms wide. Reach to the crown of the head. Come all the way up. Spin those arms wide. Reach them up. Bring the palms together. Exhale to sternum chest in Namaskar Asana. Exhale continues as hands float down next to your sides in Samastitihi. Equal standing pose, also called Tadasana. Take a few breaths here. Notice how your body's feeling, how you're starting to warm up. And let's move forward. Turn to face, actually I'm going to turn to face the side of my mat and make sure you can see what's going on whichever direction you're facing. And bring your hands to your hips. Heel toe, your feet together. This is Utkatasana chair pose. We're going to take it into a little balance pose called Garudasana, eagle pose. Eagle pose is a twisting, squeezing, balancing pose. Great for detoxification, great for mental stability, uh, learning to concentrate and focus and to breathe smoothly while you're in your balance pose. Now, bend your knees, sink your hips. Make sure that you can still see your toes past your knees. Tuck your buttocks down towards your heels, rather than flipping them up towards your shoulder blades. Make it nice and long back there. Properly tilt your pelvic floor. Now lift your right heel and cross your right leg over your left. Cross your right leg over your left. Now if you sink the hips a little bit more, you might be able to lock the toes behind your shin. Either way, keep the buttock tilting down. Reach your arms forward now. Look straight ahead. Bring your left, right arm, right arm under your left. Lift the elbows, squeeze the armpits. Breathing here, belly's firm, inner thighs squeezing. Now fly. Reach your right leg forward, reach your, right, your arms up to the sky. Exhale, and come back to Tadasana. Big feet, big toes together. Little space between the heels. Bring your hands to your hips. Take a few breaths here. Be equally weighted on both feet. Spread the bottoms of both feet. Now using your bundas, exhale, bend your knees. So using your pelvic floor for lift, using your belly for lift and support, lift your left heel, cross your left leg over your right, Reach your arms forward, cross your left arm under your right. Lift the elbows, squeeze the armpits, breathe. Tight squeeze with those inner thighs. One more breath. See if you can fly. Straighten your leg forward, left leg forward, arms lift to the ceiling. Exhale and come back to Tadasana. Take a few breaths right here. Now inhale, open your eyes, sweep your arms back up to the sky. Exhale, forwards and down, bow your head, tuck your chin into your chest for a moment. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, this time we're going all the way back to plank pose. Plant your hands, step yourself back to plank pose. Be up high on the tippy toes, press out through your heels. Squeeze your inner shoulder blades, lower inner shoulder blades together. Take a deep breath in. You're going to lower down slowly, and you can always bring the knees down. You can always modify in that fashion. Exhale, look forward as you lower down. Maybe there's a little hover before the torso rests on the mat. Keep your toes tucked under. Have your forearms straight up and down next to your sides. 
Tip your buttocks towards your heels. Inhale, upward facing dog. Your vinyasa, thighs lift, heels press out. Pull back through that special plot spot in your back ribs to pike high into downward facing dog. Inhale, inner thigh high, right leg lifts. Exhale, and float the leg through, plant the foot between your hands, come up onto your fingertips. You're gonna stay up on your back toes, drawing back through your upper right thigh, rise up, reach those arms forwards, let those arms help you lift, like the wrists are bound together with a strap. They move in tandem. Bring your palms together. Take them to your sternum chest. Pivot, plant your back heel, and then turn the torso to face forward, extend your arms. And here you are in warrior two. It's a little vinyasa transition. Your back, your front heel is in line with the back of your arch, back arch. Now bring your back hand to your back thigh. Let's find a little flow here. Turn your front palm to face up. Inhale, sweep the arm up, gaze up. Keep your lunge strong. Exhale, bring your left forearm to your front thigh. Sweep your right arm over your ear and gaze up. Side angle pose, Parsva Konasana. Firm back leg. Inhale, rise back up, reverse your pose again. As you exhale, come forward, straighten your front leg, reach over that front thigh, and find triangle pose. Legs are straight, sacrum forward, sternum bone back. Take a breath or two right here, extend all your limbs. Final breath. Press into your back heel, push back with your right thigh, and come up into reverse triangle pose. Both legs stay straight. Fun time here. Now we're gonna cartwheel the arms, bend the front knee, lift the back heel as you do. So much going on here. And then once all 10 toes are facing forward, and the hips are facing forward, it is safe to step back to downward facing dog. Breathing here, a couple of breaths, Find your balance, find your bandhas, and now come forward into plank or come forward onto your knees. Come up high on your tippy toes if you're in plank. As you exhale, bend the elbows straight back to lower down, straight back. And in close to your sides, come all the way down. Keep your toes tucked under. If your forearms have a little bit of an angle, Slide the hands back next to your middle ribs. Tilt the buttocks towards the heels. Use your bandhas and ujjayi breath lifts the body. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back and gaze up. Lift your upper thighs a little more, press out through your heels. Pull back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Five breaths here, or child's pose. Practitioner's choice. Just check in with your body, even kind of ask your body, say, body, what would you like right now? What would feel good here uh, that pertains to the yoga? <laughs> Maybe shifting your weight side to side, whatever would feel good. Now coming back into downward facing dog, if you've taken another option, side B, lift your left leg, inner thigh high. Exhale, bend the knee, plant the foot between your hands, come up on your fingertips right away. Inhale and rise all the way up. Reach through those arms to come up. Go ahead, keep your lunge strong, that back leg straight and firm. Bring your palms together. Take your hands to your sternum chest. Now that back heel plants and the arms extend so that the torso and the front of the pelvis are both facing forward. Bring your back hand to your back thigh. Turn your left palm to face up 
and sweep it above your ear. Keep your lunge strong, gaze up. Exhale gracefully forward, bend that forearm, let it rest on your thigh. Sweep your right arm above your head, look up. Breathing here. Prepare to rise back up, here we go. Inhale, keep your lunge strong. Sweep your left arm up. Now as you exhale, come forward, straighten your front leg, exhale over that front thigh, reach your right arm up to the sky. Breathing and shining, feeling so good in your yoga, staying connected with your breath. You use that top arm to come up, keep both legs straight. Use your bandhas, inhale. Feel how much strength they give you, how much support they give you. Exhale, bend the front knee. Cartwheel the arms, lift the back heel, and then step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good work. Inhale, come forward into plank. And again, you can always come down to your knees. Exhale and slowly lower down. Keeping your toes tucked under, your forearms straight up and down. Inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift the torso up off of the floor. Lift the upper thighs, roll the inner thighs up a little higher. Finding that X, that cross of energy again. Breathe it up. Push it back, Anna Mukha Svanasana. Five beautiful, full, deep breaths here. And here are child's pose. Listen to your breath. Keep your eyes soft, your jaw soft, but maintain that throat constriction. Good work. Inhaling now, come back to downward facing dog. Exhale and press back into your thighs. Now that we're all together, lift your right leg. Inhale, inner thigh high. Exhale, bend the knee. Bring the foot between your hands. Come up onto your fingertips. Now you may need your blocks for this. So grab your blocks, place your blocks at the front of your mat, like I have right here. And you're going to step in with your left foot and straighten your right leg. So this is where the blocks might come in handy for you. Taking your hands to the blocks, both legs straight for Pars Bhottanasana. Right hip draws back. Inner thighs squeeze towards each other and they roll back as the chest reaches forward. Breathing here. Exhale, bend your elbows, shift your torso a little over to the right, and let your head come down towards your shin. Inhale, lift the chest again and look forward. I'm going to take this right into revolved triangle pose, Parvrita Trikonasana. Take the block to the inside of the right ankle. Left hand presses down into the block. Bring your right hand to your right hip. Pull that hip back a little so both sides of your body stay long. And then turn to the right. Turn to the right. Roll the right ribs up and the left ribs around. Lift your right arm. Breathe here. Use your bandhas, use your breath. Final breath, now look down at the mat, return your right hand back to that block, walk your left block back out, and again fold over your front thigh. Keep drawing back through that upper right hip, both legs straight, knees lifting. Deep breath, full breath. Inhale and rise halfway up. Bend your front knee and step back to downward facing dog. You're going to scoot the blocks forward and then step back to downward facing dog. Push back into the thighs. Take a breath or two. That's a challenging sequence, yeah? 
Well, good news, there's just one more side. Lift your left leg. Exhale, bring it all the way through. Come up onto your fingertips. Step in with your right leg. Straighten both legs. The hips face forward here. Left foot forward, bring your hands to the blocks. Scissoring the inner thighs towards each other. Take a deep breath in, gaze forwards and up. And shift your torso over to the left and bow over that left thigh. A few breaths right here, wherever you are at. Wherever you're at, call it yoga and breathe into your experience. Now inhale and come halfway up, preparing for revolve triangle pose. Bring your, uh, the block that's on the right in close to that left inner ankle. Right hand stays on the block. Left hand comes to your left upper hip. Kind of hook your thumb right there in the crease of your hip and draw that hip back. You'll feel the twist start to happen. Roll the rib cage around to the left. Stand equally on both feet. Scissor the inner thighs towards each other. And then perhaps you can lift that top arm. Breathing here. Smiling. Challenging yourself. One more breath. Exhale, look down at the mat. Return your left hand back to that block. Walk your right block out. Bend your front knee. Bring the blocks a little bit forward to get them out of the way. And then hands to the mat as you step back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Breathing here, inhale and come forward. This time we're all coming forward onto our knees. Untuck your toes and round your spine. Press the hips back to the heels. Look to the front of the mat. Inhale and slide forward. Exhale and slowly lower down. With your hands next to your middle ribs, this time your feet are untucked. So you're on the toenail side for Urbha Mukha Svanas, and you have to really engage your legs here. Really use your bundas to get those hips nice and high. And then inhale, lift the chest, lift the torso up off of the mat. Keep those legs firm, gaze up, broaden your chest, one more breath in, exhale, pull back with the toes, pipe the hips, back to your home base pose in vinyasa, which is usually Adho Mukha Svanasana. Enjoy this moment, step your feet a little bit wider, you're here for about another three or four breaths. Shifting the weight back into the legs, reaching the heels back and down. If they don't touch down, that's fine. Just have that energy of the heels and the ankles moving back and down. Good. Come forward onto your knees and take child's pose. Big toes slide together. Hips roll back to the heels. Again, the forehead can rest on the block or on the mat. Your arms have been doing a lot of work. Reach your arms back next to your ankles. Turn the palms to face up. Breathe here, let the body relax. If this position is not relaxing, shift about until it is. Maybe it's better for you to let your head rest on your hands. Maybe that's a little more comfortable. Or maybe it's better for you to have those arms forward. Now walk yourself back up to kneeling, move slow, round your spine, and come on up. Good work. Bring the knees together, and come around to seated. Find your blanket. Extend your legs forward. Make sure your strap is handy. This 
This is Dandasana Staff Pose. Heels lead the way. The heels lead the way. The toes draw back. The shins press down. The backs of the knees press down. The upper thighs press down. Catch hold of your feet with your strap. Or if you are someone who can reach your feet, wrap your four fingers around the pad of the foot and bring your thumb to the base of the big toe. All right? I'll demonstrate with the strap. Arms are straight regardless of where you're at. Eyes of the elbows are turning up and the chest lifts. Gazing up, breathing here, reach out through those heels. Exhale, bend the elbows to come forwards and down. Let the elbows broaden, the chest stays nice and wide as you draw the torso forward. Once you're forward, you may find you can, you know, kind of, maybe you can catch hold of your feet. Or you can walk your hand uh, closer to your feet on that strap. Shoulders, uh, elbows lift, shoulder blades draw back away from the ears. Each inhalation is bringing the crown of the head closer to the feet. Each exhalation is bringing the sternum bone closer to the chest. Heels lead the way. Keep both legs firm. Two more breaths. Breathing into your kidney band on that lower back. Mm. Preparing to rise up. Inhale and rise up. Exhale and release your strap. Keep your strap handy. We're not done with it yet. Bend your right leg. Sketch hold with your two-piece fingers. Bring your heel in close to your hip. Bend your right leg. Step your right leg over your left leg for Golmukhasana cow face pose. We've done the arms in earlier classes. Now we're going to bring the legs into the uh, family of our asanas and we'll do the whole pose. Step your right leg over your left. Have your heel in close to your hip. And then rock over to the left. Bend your left leg and bring the heel in close to your hip. You can even tuck it underneath your blanket to get it in a little bit closer. Release your right foot from the mat and start to snuggle those knees together. Uh, a couple different ways you can do this is you can rock forward, come off your hips, bring those knees a little closer and sit back down. You can take your forearm, uh, your left forearm between your knees and use it as leverage to bring them together. Or if this is a little too much already, you can kind of open up your pose a little bit like this or even like this. So you should be feeling a stretch in your outer hips, in your inner groins. They're tight, they're firm. Interlace your fingers onto your front knee and lift your chest. And then balance your sits bones. So you might have to bring a little more zip into that right hip to bring it down. That's okay. Find your strap. Place your strap on your right shoulder. Reach your right arm out. Inner arm up, outer arm down, turn the palm to face up, and lift the arm above your head. Bend the elbow so that the elbow is facing the ceiling. You can even take hold of it with your left hand to lift it a little bit more. And then holding the strap, reach your left arm out, turn your palm down and away, opposite rotation of the upper arm, sweep it behind you, turn your fingers to face up, and crawl your hands close together on that strap. That strap is your friend. <laughs> yeah, it's a magic tool for making your arms longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you thought there wasn't any magic left in this world. Oh, please. It's all around you <laughs> in the form of yoga props. Press your right hip down. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Draw your lower ribs in and breathe. Make sure that upper arm isn't uh, pressing on your neck or your head. Take one more breath. And then slowly release the arms the same way that they came in. Bring them back around. Good job. Let's come out of this leg position by rocking over to the left. Straighten the left leg. Step over with the right and straighten the right leg. Give those legs a little shake out. Give the toes a little shake out. Peace fingers underneath the left knee. Side B. Bend the knee. Step over your right thigh, 
rock over to the right, bend your right leg and bring the heel in close to your hip or tuck it underneath the blanket. Then release the left foot from the mat. The toes are pointing away from you. Uh, Mr. Iyengar, BKS Iyengar, uh, when he does this, when he would do this pose, he would sit on his feet. Uh, you can take a look in your Light on Yoga book, our, our handbook for our class, and you'll see that he's sitting on his feet. Yeah, that's why he's uh, Mr. Iyengar, that's why he's Guruji. <laughs> and then interlacing your fingers onto the front knee, lift your chest. Take a few peaceful breaths here. Gaze is soft. Left hip is pressing down. Inner thighs are squeezing. Now finding your strap, place it on your left shoulder and we'll move into the arms for the full pose. Reach your left arm out, inner arm up, outer arm down. Feel the rotation, plug that humerus bone into the shoulder socket and then lift your arm above your ear. Exhale, bend your knee and catch hold of the strap. Reach the right arm out. Opposite rotation. Upper arm up, inner arm down, palm turns away. Sweep the arm behind you. Turn the fingers to face up and catch hold of the strap. And if you, uh, if you have the space back there, you can always grip your hands like this. You can make a little hook with the hands. We call it uh, uh, the Ganesh Mudra or Ganesh Grip. Ganesh is the energy of the divine that removes obstacles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deep breath here as you pull on the strap or the fingertips. Left elbow faces up, right elbow faces down. Front ribs draw in. Breath is deep. Just a few more. You're almost there. Now, if you engage your bundas here, if you've forgotten, what happens? Can you feel the difference? That's good. Yeah, torso lifts, right? More stability. Release your hands as you exhale and let those arms gracefully float back to the front of your mat the same way that they came in. Good work. Strap to the side. Thank you, strap. Magic strap. Rock over uh, uh, to, uh, to the right and straighten the bottom leg. And then help your left leg over and straighten your left leg. Bend both knees and bring your feet together. Woo! Baddha Konasana. You feel the effects of Gomukhasana. It's a very powerful pose, isn't it? So here in Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose, your heels are touching. The balls of your feet are touching, the big toes are touching. Lift your chest. If here you feel like your back is rounding and you're sinking, well that's okay. Bring your hands behind you to lift your chest. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Now open up your legs nice and wide, as wide as you can for Upavishta Konasana. Backs of your heels press down, shins and thighs. Toes face straight up, so zero rotation on these legs. Deep breath here as you push down into the upper thighs to lift the chest. If you'd like a little bit more here, and you can keep those toes facing straight up, bring your hands forward. Feet are still facing straight up, pivot at your hips. You'll feel the stretch move a little deeper into your inner thighs. Still need a little bit more? Slide your hips up off your blanket. Slide yourself forward a little bit. Still need a little bit more? Walk your hands forward. <laughs> Breathe. You see, uh, there'll always be something new to explore in your yoga. There'll always be somewhere new to go. Always a new challenge. Uh, it destroys the ego, right? No matter what, in your yoga practice, whether you've been practicing six months or 60 years, you're still a beginner. We're all beginners. There's always somewhere new to go. It's beautiful and it's humbling. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then all the way back up if you've come forward. 
Catch on to the backs of your knees to help them come back together into Baddha Konasana. Good work. Let's take a twist here. Bring your left hand to the inside of your left knee. You're going to press away just to get a little deeper stretch in the inner thigh. Bring your right hand behind you. Sit up nice and tall and twist. So push the leg down with your left hand. Press away with it. See if you can get that flesh to lengthen and stretch. Just search for it. It's, it's subtle, but it's there. Deep breath in. Come back to center as you breathe out. And switch sides. Right hand to the inner knee. Pressing away to stretch the inner groin. Left hand behind you. Twist. Press your feet together. Nice deep breath. Two more. Wherever you're at. And then exhale back to center. Help your knees come together and straighten your legs for Paschimottanasana Western Stretch. Feel that action you just did in the upper hips? Yes, so good. Very detoxing. <laughs> Take your strap to the balls of your feet. And have your feet uh, spread, the bottoms of the feet spread, the toes spread, the heels reach forward, and then the chest lifts. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Come forward over your thighs once more. Draw back with the shoulders. Take any bind on your feet that's available. Uh, for those of you who have extra space and you can reach past with your wrist, catch hold of your hand. Catch hold of your wrist with your right hand. Give you a little better view here. Each inhalation takes the crown of the head a little closer to your feet. Each exhalation brings that sternum bone closer to your thighs. Breathing into the lower back, into the kidney band, into that area where your energies cross. There you go. Inhale, look forward, gaze up. Exhale, and come to Dandasana, staff pose, hands next to your hips. Take a few breaths here. Tip your head to the right, and press your left hand down a little bit more. Take a nice stretch through the sides of your neck. Inhale, and bring your chin back up to center. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder, press your right hand down. And inhale, head back to center. Exhale and release your pose. Come off your blanket, bend your knees. Slide your blanket to the back of your mat. Make sure your strap is handy and then just watch just for a moment here. This is new for most of you. This is a version of uh, Viparita Karani, uh, loosely translated as legs up the wall because usually we kind of go up against a wall with our legs, elevating them. That gives us our inversion at the end of our practice. Today, we're going to do Viparita Karani, but with a strap on our feet. So it looks like this. Just like an imaginary wall behind the thighs. The shoulders stay down. We're here for about, well, we're here for about maybe about 20 breaths. The sacrum stays on the mat, the belly stays in. All right, so go ahead now with your knees bent, lie down. Find your strap. Draw your knees into your chest and lasso the balls of your feet, same place that you use for Paschimottanasana. And then sacrum's on the mat, straighten your legs. Now depending on uh, the condition of your lower back here, you may not be able to bring the legs straight up and down right now without lifting the sacrum up off of the mat. When we want the whole spine supported in this pose, it's one of the most important parts. So take the legs, take the heels down closer to the front of your mat until you feel your sacrum uh, pressing down. And for those of you who are unsure, your sacrum's right at the base of your spine. It's a little triangular bone. 
And then firm the legs, firm the knees, draw your belly in and press your side waist down. If you can keep the sacrum on the mat from there, then you can start to draw those legs in. And you'll feel the stretch. You'll know when you're at the place where you're being challenged, but you're not suffering. Deep breath. Gazing up at your beautiful lotus feet or just right up to the sky, whatever's above you, soft gaze. A few more breaths here. And you can reach the sternum bone a little closer to the chin, but let the back of the head remain on the mat, heavy and happy and relaxed. Notice if you feel a stretch more intensely in the back of one thigh than the other. Collarbones stay spread, front ribs draw in. Just a few more breaths. Good work. Bend your knees, give yourself a little hug, and release that strap. Take your hands to your kneecaps, and just make little happy circles with the knees. Now, the more the arms do the work for you, the better the massage on the lower back, switch directions. Breathing deep. Come to center with the knees. Inhale. Exhale. And then just round your body up. Like bring your forehead to your knees. Knees to forehead. Curl yourself up. And then head back to mat. And feet back to the mat. Walk your feet wide to the sides. We're going to take a little twist before our Shavasana. Walk your feet wide to the sides of your mat. And keep your knees wide as well. So knees and feet are in line with each other. Reach your arms wide into a T-shape, or you can bend the elbows. Uh, practitioner's choice. Just let your knees roll down to the left like windshield wipers. Turn your head to the right. Let gravity do the work in this pose for you. You just relax. And then inhale the knees up, look up. Exhale, knees over to right and head to left. Full deep breath, preparing for your Shavasana. Again, knees up, then over, head turns. Just move a few times like this, inhaling up and exhaling over. And then knees back up, head back up, and here you are at your Shavasana. Straighten your legs. Reach your arms down next to your sides. And take your blanket and tuck it underneath your head and neck for a little extra support. Snuggle your shoulder blades in. And let your arms reach a bit away from the sides of your body. A little space between the upper arms and the torso. Then all together, take a huge breath in. Hold it in, sigh it out. <sighs> now you take your rest. And don't, uh, don't use this time to think about outside things. Use this time to think about inside things. Reconnect with yourself. Eyes are closed. The little muscles around the eyes are soft. The hinge of the jaw is relaxed. The tongue is resting on the lower palate of the mouth. The lips are soft. Let your nostrils relax, let them soften, and let them just gently flare as you breathe in. Notice the temperature of the air as you breathe in. And then notice the temperature of the air as you breathe out. The little muscles around your ears, ask them to soften and relax. 
Travel down your ear canals. And ask even your eardrums to soften and to relax. Sweet, deep, delicious breath. body sinks down into the mat and softens. Gently now. Deep in your breath. Take a full breath into your belly and let it expand up into the ribs. Sigh it out. Invite another deep, full breath in and encourage a little motion back into the fingers and toes. Brushing your thumbs across your fingertips, wiggling your toes. Then roll your wrists around in little circles, your ankles around in little circles, and turn your head side to side. You can feel how your body's kind of maybe craving a big full body stretch. So sweep those arms above your head. Breathe in as deep as you can. It's big, organic, full body stretch. Let it go with another side. <sighs> Bend your knees. Shift your hips a few inches to the left and roll all the way over onto your right side. Now curl up into a little ball here. It's one of the sweetest places in your practice. Take a few breaths into your back, into that little area there where your energy's crossed over. Take some breath up into behind your shoulder blades, into your neck, up into your head. And using the strength of your arms now, keep your head very heavy so it's the last thing that rises up. Come up very gracefully from your Shavasana, just walk yourself up with your hands. Come around to seated. Place your hips on your blanket. Cross your left leg in first. Take your right to the outside and bring your palms together in reverence at the sternum chest. Lift the sternum chest, level your chin and close your eyes. This is your meditation seat. Take a few breaths. And thanking yourself for your practice, let's, let's take all this goodness and dedicate. The good karma you accrue in your practice is energy. And so we send that energy out into the world that it may help heal this world. May all beings everywhere be happy. Can you imagine a world like that? You imagine a world where all beings are healthy. There's no more suffering or sickness. Can you imagine a world where all beings are safe? To have a safe place to go is one of the most precious things in the world. May all beings everywhere have somewhere safe to go. And can you imagine all beings everywhere, including yourself, being completely and blissfully at peace? 
focus on the stars, you can have love too. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering. Good. Exhale for one final ohm to seal our practice of union. Exhale your breath. Slowly fill from base to top as you breathe in. Bowing your head. Float the backs of your hands down to your thighs. Turn your palms to face up. Keeping your sternum chest well lifted and bright, your eyes still closed. Inhale and draw the chin up to center. Exhale and open your beautiful eyes. Blink once or twice and smile. I can feel it. Thank you for being here and thank you for being present. Thank you for being my teachers. From the light in me, I honor that light in you. Namaste. work. Drink a lot of water right after this practice. We squeezed and now you got to get those toxins flushed out of your body. Do a lot of squeezing, a lot of twisting, a lot of wringing out. So the only way to get what you wrung out, out, is to drink some water. All right? So make a personal commitment to drink a lot of water from now until about two hours before you go to bed. <laughs> Thank you so much and uh, I'll see you here next week. Namaste. Bye.